The last question frequently asked by patients as well as healthcare providers, what are the risks of using cannabis in a GI practice? So there are lots of different concerns that we have related to the use of cannabis in our GI patients. One, there's legal implications because of its federally illegal status despite what state laws are. Of course, there may be work implications and travel implications. We do know that there are studies associated with a decrease of life achievement. So we know that younger patients who use cannabinoids don't have the same success as if they didn't use cannabinoids. There's concerns about drug interactions because cannabis actually works as an, an inhibitor and an activator through the SIP system in the liver. And we know that there's lots of medications that, that act and are cleared through that system. And so, of course, that's a very important consideration when patients want to introduce cannabis as an adjuvant therapy. Other things is there's an increased risk for other substance abuse, potential worsening anxiety and depression, increased risk for motor vehicle accidents, and then an increased risk for adverse clinical effects. Well, what are some of those things that we can see as adverse clinical effects in patients using cannabinoids? They're directly related to where the cannabinoids work in the body. So there's increasing sleep disturbances that can be reported even though we know patients use it for improved sleep quality. Chronic use is actually associated with disrupted sleep patterns. There's increased sedation, ataxia, dizziness, headaches. Patients can have an increase in psychosis, anxiety, feelings of euphoria. There's risk for increase in heart rate, and there are some small studies that show a possible increased risk in arrhythmias. We know that there's decreased fertility both in men and women, and patients can experience nausea. I'll talk a little bit more about nausea and the diagnosis of cannabis hyperemesis syndrome in just a minute. But one of the things that's most concerning about cannabis use in IBD patients is the risk for them potentially stopping their medical therapies. It's been reported in several studies that patients are less likely to report cannabis use to their healthcare provider. And so thus, they may be masking chronic symptoms, which may be a sign of underlying inflammation by using cannabis. And then we do know that patients who use cannabis in, in addition to their medical therapy are more likely to stop their medical therapy. And that's where my concern about the real risks of cannabis use in IBD patients. But just a word on cannabis hyperemesis syndrome. Cannabis hyperemesis syndrome by the Rome 4 criteria actually now has criteria for it. So this is stereotypical episodic vomiting resembling um, cyclical vomiting syndrome, presentation after prolonged excessive cannabis use, and relief of vomiting by sustained cessation of cannabis use. There may be some supportive evidence that patients also have relief with taking hot showers. The treatment is for patients to stop using cannabis. However, we see this in patients who have chronic excessive use, and so it may be hard to convince a patient that this might be the underlying cause to their symptoms.